Welcome. Episode 16 is here. Rigid, sinewy, dripping. Ready to educate you. From above. And below. Learn them. Things them. Stuff them. Education. Did we say episode 16 already? We did. 16 episodes. With your hosts, James and Dan. Lenny, Lenny, good times. Lenny. Rub it down your thighs. <laughs> like, like knowledge juice. Oh, juice. Moist juice. Facts! <laughs> I'm gonna start on that, fuck. Welcome. 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 I've got a, what's the Rock of the Desperados. Because, you know. Who doesn't like beer with other shit in it? But smoke it alcohol and regular beer. Come on. Oh, burn. No. Yeah. You fell with the bottle opener. That's shocking. I'm sorry. Everyone's sorry. I think these are really nice beers, but they do smell a bit like B.O. Dude, how much lime do you drink if that's your B.O.? That's, like, <laughs> that's really weird. Sorry. Well, no, I think it's, I, I like, because it's like, normally you get yeah. like I dropped my fact you stick. You threw your phone across the room. <laughs> fact stick. <laughs> mm, mm. Anyway, yes. I think as we're working towards the summary beers, and I think you have to wait for it to be warm. Mm. I told you the dog would want to come in here. Oh, hang on a sec. <laughs> we let the dog in. He needs to be here, otherwise it's not a real podcast. It's just... Hound. Well, that's a dog cast. I don't know. Come here. Come here, fuck weasel. Come here. Come on. He's small, he's not tall, he's got no brains at all. But he's massive paddles. Massive paddles. Okay. Okay, I've got... It's getting to that point now. I don't know, because we do these silly ads, and I've got so much more of them than I have any facts. <laughs> and it's kind of... It's a problem. Well, I've, um, I've, I've got... Um, I've been doing some research. Oh, yeah. Hey, I've got I'm like, going um, to slide the table forward. Sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry. I just want to... All right, so spin. that's affected all the levels and fucked everything up. I'm sorry, it oh, was no. definitely the dog's fault. Okay, yeah, Stanry, Stanry, yeah, but I didn't really. I've got like a soap opera of my my category. So, my I'm, I'm UFOs and you are Egyptian gods. That's interesting. Okay, mm. should we get straight into it or do anything? Any, you want to say anything else? Well, before we do the um, Go on, one, tell two, me. one, two, one, two, math, yeah, yeah, I had a long time listener. As oh. I actually said, you know, it's, it's good that you're doing this, but because you can't see anything, yeah, it makes it a bit more, I don't know, just not not as fun. I don't know how to, how do you do rock, paper, scissors when you can't see? Oh, I know, have an imagination. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Fuck you, friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening. That, that little bit's... For us, right? This is our, our... See, the thing is, some things you can't, you can't <laughs> see what's going on here. And you can't smell either. You can't smell that cheese and onion burp that James just just dropped on me. I've not had cheese. Or, no, I have had cheese. I had onion. I think I might have. No, I haven't. I yeah. don't. I look. I, I can just. It just smells of Walker's cheese and onion crisps. Yeah. And now it's in the room with me. Sorry. But you guys, you're you're, you're in a safe. You're in a safe zone. Mm. You're in a safe place, and I feel like that's actually, you know, it's a good thing. Yeah. But but thank you to to said listener. Um, yeah, sorry, I didn't yeah. really mean to say fuck you. That was no. a misspeak. So, should we do the um, ever, ever non-fun for listeners? <laughs> yes, the drudgery that is rock paper scissors. Um, right, I don't want you now. I feel, no, I feel really. Well, you got to. Otherwise, we can't decide who goes first. Don't worry, just do scissors. No, don't do this. Oh. You're just this king psych out. Guess who's back in? Okay, you ready? Yeah. One, two, spam. Oh. Rocky rock. <laughs> One, two, spam. Oh, oh, you blunted my scissors. Stick with rock. Always stick with rock. That's the cycle. That's the psychological. Until it's next week, you don't do that. But no, we'll, we'll think of something next week. Okay, so I won. Yeah. Okay. Now we're in UFA t- UFO town now, right? Okay. UFO. UFOs. <laughs> and um, this is actually interesting because it's like. Oh, it's cool, isn't it? Like the idea that there's alien life. Because the thing is, like, you know there definitely is, and it's interesting, but 
Because there's got to be, because it's everything's too big for there to not be. You know, it's like as unlikely as it is that we exist. The fact is, we do. So it's it's proven the theory. You know, life can come out of no life. So here we are. So there's got to be more of it because the universe is so fucking endless. It's just, are they fucking around watching us? And taking us away and st- sticking stuff our asses. <laughs> I mean, that's. Well, I'm still waiting for mine. Yeah. <laughs> no, S- I'm not. Sitting I'm there not. going, wanting. No, you said it. Like, it's, in the, it's in the universe now. You know, Aliens is the podcast, right? Oh, oh no. They're like, oh shit. He's, he's, he's fucking. He's pushing it. He's taking the piss. Thinks we won't do it. <laughs> I'm scared now. You're definitely going to get um, explored. <laughs> Ouch. Fuck off, ET. <laughs> I'm not Elliot. <laughs> Where's my little speaking spell? <laughs> so, are you implying that he abused Elliot? Oh, blatantly! Come on, he snitched finger. That's, that's not an unexperienced alien finger. I'm sorry, yeah. he glows at the end. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Et after hours. I can't think of another reason why his finger would glow. Honestly, <laughs> Get to work out how far in he is. Oh, oh, is, is it gone past that time? Okay, okay. Elliot. <coughs> Elliot's throwing the bones. There was a time all of a sudden he's got like James L. Jones's voice, like Elliot. <laughs> I am your lover. <laughs> and yeah, I think you need to go home. <laughs> oh dear. Sorry. All right, that's um. I never, I never got ET. I just never, never connected with it. Couldn't just. No. Nah. I, I, you know, it's like I love, I love me some Spielberg, and I love all that. I just was like, eh. Don't care. I don't know. Maybe I'm dead inside. It's such a classic, and I'm like, eh. I, th- I don't kind of. Um, I think maybe we were too. We were too. Um, I don't know. Maybe young when it obviously it came out. I came out the year I was born, so it's like I'm definitely too young for it. But still, I should still. I, I watch older films and connect to it. I don't know. Anyway, random. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So, Dan facts. Dan facts. Raffles. <laughs> um. So. Or UAPs, because they've recategorised them, haven't they? This is in recent times. Learn me, I don't know. Um, identified aerial phenomena. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just it's just a different... Well, because unidentified flying object is a bit too specific. I think they're just keeping it as vague as possible, because no one knows what the fuck it is. Because a, a flying object is like, well, it's unidentified, so they don't know what it is, but it could be a balloon or some shit, which isn't technically flying, so they're just like, it could be any old shit. could be like, you know, could be 20 geese that got whacked together and tied up in string and they're just flying around the wind that would suck well they'd be dead I assume but still yeah. <laughs> I'm like but that's not they're not flying because they're dead they're just being caught up in the wind or something. I don't know it's a very random <laughs> and it in- seems example, to me it? like you lived your life <laughs> like a gaggle of gooses tied up with string in the wind <laughs> that's a different song <laughs> 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 sorry <laughs> so, I'll, I'll tell you what I'll let you in on a little little uh, bit of trauma um when I was young, I was down at the uh, the Elswood Friars, the Priory, which is where a bunch of monks hang out and feed. There's lots of geese there, though, right? Yeah. So I was down by the little lake there full of geese, and I was feeding them bread because it's very idyllic and lovely, and that's what you do, right? And I was probably, I must have been six or seven, maybe younger, and this goose fucked me up like proper went for me <laughs> chased me no the thing is geese don't geese are horrible and they have serrated beaks and I learnt that first hand I learnt that like when I, I fell over and it was over me and looked up and I noticed like why is your beak spiky you sick fuck <laughs> and it was like running at me and I just threw all the bread and fucking scarpered I think it clipped my foot so I always remember like just being terrified of the fuckers then I grew up and I was bigger than them so I know I just um... <laughs> kick them well, I mean, no, I'm not. I'm still scared. No. It's like they're still hard. But it's like you know, I'm bigger than a you know. You know, thinking they're basically like Begbie from Train Spotting, right? I'm like I'm bigger than him. I still wouldn't start some shit, you know. You know, I wouldn't kick a Rottweiler. I'm bigger than them, but it's like there's certain things. It's like no, nah, geese aren't. Anyway, fucking hell, facts. Jesus Christ. So, um, so what are you doing, geese? I'm doing geese and and aliens, <laughs> alien geese. Um, they might be aliens. They're not aliens. Um, so. Well, there's, so there's, there are actually historical encounters and, and references that could be... Oh, bless you. Dog's getting all hoofy. He's very... He's working for the deep state. He's trying to stop us talking about it. Um, so they're all the conspiracy theory shit, but, like, cutting through all that bullshit, because so many of the things I looked into are just, like, 
well, it could be this, maybe it's this, or they're just lies, or they're just crap video. So, dog, dog, get up, you're being a bellend. Um, <laughs> so the earliest uh, encounters I can see that are verified in a way that's valid, because Egyptians, they, they recorded some stuff, but a lot of it, they recorded a lot of things from the sky. And, uh, you, know, you know, you could interpret things a certain way, but they're so vague and they could be anything, right? But the earliest famous encounter was in Nuremberg, uh, Nuremberg in 1561. Uh, residents of Nuremberg described an aerial battle followed by the appearance of a large black triangular object and then crashed outside the city. And this was seen by lots of people. There's a broadsheet recorded that witnesses observed hundreds of spheres, cylinders and other oddly shaped objects that moved erratically overhead. A series of mass sightings of celestial phenomena occurred in 1566 above Basel, Switzerland. So this was uh, five years later. It was just the thing of the time. Um, the Basel pamphlet in 1566 blur, describes unusual sunrises and sunsets. Celestial phenomena were said to have fought together in form of numerous red and black balls in the sky before the rising sun. The report is discussed among historians and meteorologists. The phenomenon has to be interpreted by some ufologists, or ufologists, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, um, to be a sky battle between unidentified flying objects. Now, the difficulty is... It was it was the hot thing at that. It was a hot ticket. It was like there was a bit of a buzz after that first encounter, and then over those five years there were lots of little sightings, and there were two. Bi- I mentioned the two big ones, but it seems like they, it does seem to come along in ways. It kind of enters the sort of the zeitgeist, the sort of the public consciousness, and there's this sort of mass hysteria about it. Everyone's seeing what they want to see, sort of thing. So you kind of have to take everything with a grain of salt because, like. Now, it could be there was a particular era where there were lots of spaceships in the sky, sky, right? That's one way to take it. Or, everyone's thinking about it and they just got a bit... Angsty. Bullshitty. (laughs) Talk some shit. Ate some shrooms. I saw one too. Yeah. And then it's just, it's Chinese whispers and shit. But but that was, the thing is, to a certain extent as well, that was the earliest point it was recorded because it was the earliest time there were newspapers being printed. And before that, there was very little documentation. And then for like, before that, you've got Dark Ages where pretty much only people recording anything are priests. And priests didn't record things unless Jesus did it. <laughs> it's like, God did it or it didn't happen. So there's huge <laughs> amounts of undocumented things because you had such a biased um, source of records. Um, right back, and then you've got like Egyptians and Greeks and stuff who weirdly for the most part, weren't documenting spaceships and shit, and they were both really good, and, and Chinese dynasties and all this stuff. There were lots of people historically. Uh, now, there are references to, like, uh, like the Nazca Lines in oh, South America, I can't remember which country it is, but, so there's, uh, you've seen those ones, the giant, like, you can only see them from up in the sky and stuff. Mm. So there's records there, but they're not really, like, they're not documents that we would say are, are proof of anything. They're just, like, <clears throat> Why were they doing that? Rob was trying to communicate something. I'm like, yeah, you can interpret that, but it's basically pulling out your ass. Hmm. But this was the first time it was recorded. We saw a bunch of fucking things flying around the sky, 1561, 1566. And then after that, it kind of died off. Like, it wasn't hot shit anymore. Or maybe the aliens all went home. Who the fuck knows, right? But it's... it's You can tell my, my vibe on that, right? But I'm just like, that's... It's interesting. But it, the fact that it coincides with printing press... And the fact that there's communication, people are hearing about things in a way they weren't hearing about it before, means that it's probably easy to get, you know, every time there's a new form of uh, mass communication, there's always some hysteria that follows it. Like, you remember like radio became hot shit, and um, I'm not actually mentioned, I haven't, I, haven't got, I should have done a piece on it, but you know, the War of the Worlds thing? when uh, <gasps> Love that. Yeah, but you remember, like, the War of the Worlds was obviously, it was a book, and then they did a radio play, uh, uh, bloody... Um, in the 20s, 1920s. Yeah. Um, and scared the shit out of everyone. Um, uh, bloody... Leslie Wells, and it was... Uh, who did it? Bloody... Uh, um, what, the narrator? Yeah, what's his name? I know, the narrator from the CD was David Essex. No, 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 I mean... I mean yeah, I was going to say, that's... No, 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 um... Oh, my brain fell off. Oh, come on. I was watching an interview with him the other day, actually, about this. This was... Um, nope, that's really annoyed me now. It's really annoying me. The chances of anything come from Mars was a million to one. one. Is a... <gasps> the Red Moss. <laughs> Mate, I used to, that CD scared the crap out of me. It was that time when we was having a barbecue at yours and then the skies just went to, to shit and it was just dark and thunder. And then we put Water World CD. I was like, <laughs> what a big long legged thing has come along and start trying to 
mooch us up as mate. Yeah. I'm gonna have to stick it up. I'm really annoyed my brain didn't do the thing it does. Well. I'm just I'm just angry really. So the famous radio broadcast uh, was a Halloween episode of the Mercury Theatre air uh, directed by Orson Welles. Fuck me. Orson Welles. Oh of course. You know, Unicron. Yeah. You know. yeah. Um famously Unicron, obviously, above all other things. Um but yeah, so he did a narration of it as part of a Halloween broadcast and purportedly scared a lot of people and it was like, oh no, but it was just a little bit it wasn't actually that beginning way. But that that was there was a hysteria at the time about UFOs. So when he played that and he even said the caveat like, This is fake. He said that beforehand. Then he played it and people would just chime in at a certain point, like, Have you heard on Radio Six? Like, like and people would like, you know, there was this it was hysterical. But um you know, it seems like the printing press there may have been a similar hysteria. Anyway, that's my first take on aliens. Oh, I thought it was interesting, but I'm 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 skeptical still. Mm. Have you not watched X Files? That's a great documentary. It is a good documentary. Yeah. Documentary until it goes a bit squirrely later. David Duchovny and uh, Gillian Anderson and Julius. Yeah, I know right. I know right. She, that was in 1993, right? Yeah. And here's the thing: she was hot shit at the time. Everyone was like, and it didn't really like. I wasn't. I don't know. Like, it was, like she, yeah, she was. Yeah, she was. But I, I was. She wasn't. Like, I didn't. She, her poster was not. No, it wasn't my wall actually. <laughs> I tell her I. I remember now. There was her. She did like some leather photo shoot, and I had that poster all. So shut up, Dan. But I'm just saying. Later on, it was later on when she came back as a sort of a, an adult, and especially with the English accent and stuff. Yeah. I've seen other things, and I'm like, so maybe because I'm older now, but I was like, damn. You but know? but if if. Julian Anderson, if you are one of our many listeners, if you do want to to come over at any point, you yeah. know, just to, to talk about some things, then well, we could do this because she lives I'm, in England. She's coming up, by the way. There you go. Exactly. Um, we'll just. I mean, just... it's a small island. Yeah, yeah. At most, like realistically, you're like no more than three, four hours away. All there right. You. I mean, what else you got to do? I mean, I know you got some projects going on, but this would probably do more. Look, if you really want to broaden your career, I'm just saying. I know you're hot shit and all that. And you got your contacts, but I'm saying that we probably could get you a little bit more exposure than you used to. You know, it was it my mattresses. I said, "No, don't do mattresses." Oh, tell us. I didn't get the reference. No, no, it's the adverts which do mattresses at the moment. Did she? Yeah. Oh, what's that? Okay. Anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> so, tangent mm-hmm. over. Tangent. That was nothing but tangent. No. It's like twenty minutes in. It's just been tangent so far, and that bullshit intro we did. Oh no. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> if, if we have, if, if it's if it was okay, then we changed it because it definitely yeah. would. You wouldn't have thought about the thing we did, but. <laughs> Realistically, we're not going to change that. That's, that is what it is. It's going to go on our best of. <laughs> <laughs> best of. We should do best of every week. Yeah. Just, just the same episode repeated again. Like, everything's the best. Fucking suck it, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Moving over. So what are we dealing with? We're dealing Egyptian with... Egyptian gods. Egyptian gods. So first, I was, I was telling my brother, I gave him, um, you know, when you're in the insider. Luke David! Sorry. That, that was good. I like the way that you panned it as well. I, it's, it's not even stereo. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> No, it is stereo. No, I don't know. But so, is this stereo? Can you hear things left from side to side? I don't think it's stereo. Looking at the waveform on the stereo, feet. stereo. No, so I said um, I'm gonna be looking at Egyptian gods, and um, Dan's gonna be doing things about UFOs. He said, "What Stargate? Said, what, what do you mean?" And then he just shouting the whole thing. Oh, Stargate. That's all about like aliens and um, the Egyptians and all that. Sort of, it's all linked in. It's all like. Oh yeah. See, I don't. I've, the only reference I've got to Stargate is if it's mentioned the, the Big Bang Theory. That's... Stargate. Oh no, dude. Stargate was great. And yeah. Stargate. And I tell you what, and I, I don't even mind. I watched not all of it, admittedly, but Stargate SG One yeah. was a cracking show. It was good shit, and it was very clever. And they had to integrate all the gods and stuff, and and they had a lot of inter- it was it was good fun. It was good fun. Maybe. Maybe I'll have a look. Oh no, don't do it now. It's fine. No. It's much better <laughs> shit to watch. There's too much amazing things to watch. You can't be going back to watch old stuff. There's just no time. Um, so, the ancient Egyptians had many gods and goddesses. Some gods were stars, others were humans and animals. So, honestly, they got they pulled them all out of the hat. So, the Egyptians had one of the largest and most complex pantheons, or a group of respective people, Pantheon. um, pantheons, mm. of gods uh, of any civilization in the ancient world. Over the course of Egyptian history, hundreds of gods and goddesses were worshipped. The characteristics of, of individuals goes... Um, oh, sorry, individuals, gods, could be hard, hard to pin down. Most of a principal associate yeah, there. Bloody hell, sorry. Most had a principal association. For example, with the sun, with the underworld, 
and they also had specific forms, but these could be changed over time as gods arose and fell of importance and evolved in ways to correspond to developments in the Egyptian society. <sighs> that was a that was a slog, wasn't it? That was, that was that, honestly because like, my my eyes are crap, so I'm trying to read off my tiny tiny phone screen. I may as well just like press copy and just play them. But no, no. <laughs> just like, and then they then it just have it like yeah. Siri can say it. <laughs> Hi. So I'm, I'm basically I'm looking at the Egyptian gods and I'm thinking I'm gonna do a bit of research and I'm have a look. Um, and one like the main ones that you get, mate, that's a fucking soap opera going on here. Yeah. Well, the Greeks were the same. They were just a bunch of fucking, you know, and everyone fucked everyone, and mm. it was all just a bit crazy. Um, I don't know, and obviously because uh, the, the history though, because it was like it wasn't just the Egyptian gods. They were they changed as they as the Egyptians changed yeah. like over time. So like the Egyptian dynasty lasted there were so many dynasties so many t- like eras um, so like, I always remember that fact that um, Cleopatra she was closer to present day yeah. than she was to the construction of the the Spirits of Giza yeah in in Egypt and she, she was around like what, like 2000 years ago so you just think in those, in those terms you're like that's that, obviously that, and, and gods are you know for the sake of actual facts they were created by by men um and so they're just as as the chat times change they shut ch- ch- new gods up they're like and then like oh, i've got this hot new hot new ship this new god is better than the old god like really i always remember like tutankhamun tutankhamun because he yeah. was too oh. he was too tank atten and then he changed it to tutankhamun because they put the god's name that they were their their their, their top god yeah. they changed the end of their name into the top god's name as they're going on, it's like it's really, it's like they just like just change it halfway through the thing. Like we make a big thing of uh, oh Henry VIII like changing like Church of England all this shit. Like they did that all the time. It was like yeah. But anyway, I've I've got a theory behind. So they've got loads of gods, right? And you got some the main ones, right? They, they, they oh I'm sorry, but I think the Egyptian gods are fucking cool. It's like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm. But um, but then I'm looking into it. I wanted to look at the because there's like over two thousand of them. Yeah, there's, there's two thousand gods. More than. That's then, a bit much. It devalues them, doesn't it? Well, this is because one of the other gods... The god of hats. The god of, god of strong cheeses. I think a new film's coming out soon. God of horse hats. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I but, the horse hat mm, but no, it's, it's some of the, um, the lesser known gods. Honestly, I, I think basically... Um, as they changed gods, they go, oh, I had this guy come round. He was like fixing up my ass. I said, she is good. He's a fucking god. And then this person's now a god. I think that's it's honestly some. So someone's really good at something like. That's 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 I what I you, think. It, things were less impressive back then because well, no, things were more impressive for less things. Like he made such a good sandwich, he must have been a deity. You know, like he put cheese and bacon and chicken in a sandwich, and sandwiches haven't been invented yet, so. See. I'm calling God. I'm just calling you. <laughs> I'm just getting out the God card. Like you can't keep getting out God cards. I'm like I got a pack of them. I'm fine. It's like so. What I'm gonna do is I'll, so some of the main gods. I'll go through the story because I fucking soap up. I love it. Go. But there's this one god. I'm gonna give you. So when I say they're like tradespeople, check a trade.com. Who are you gonna call? Oh, I want this god to do my work. Why? Because they're good. So you're gonna call. So basically, you got dodgy toilet, haven't you? Right. So oh, let me have a look and check a trade. Oh, do I? The god of toilets. Yeah? He's, yeah. Well, he was a god of toilets? Yeah. You're clutching it. So, yeah. I didn't know they had toilets. I thought oh. they just shit on the floor. Gia was an Egyptian god of sanitation. So say again? Gia was an Egyptian Dua. god. Gia, D-U-A. D-U-A. Oh, Dua. Dua. Yeah. Oh, Dua Lipa. Yeah. Oh, uh, maybe she cleans up toilets. I mean... Ah, oh, I feel... Ah, uh, fine. She's a toilet girl. It's fine. So Dua was an Egyptian god of sanitation and, yes, toilets. This meant... He was responsible for keeping things clean, particularly in very dirty places such as bathrooms. Sanitation also includes the safe disposal of everything that ends up in your toilet. Yes, this was a long-winded way of saying getting rid of your poo. So there's basically the poo god, Dua, um, got the toilets. Number two. Yeah. Dua. <laughs> Dua, I come for your number two. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I think this... So, is yeah. this Mr. Hanky? <laughs> Howdy ho! <laughs> it's like howdy ho! A knocks on the moon. 
But yeah, got got, got the toilets. Um, that, that's one of my obscure ones. I mean, I want to talk about the the bigger ones at some point, but that's. I like obscure time. toilet god. Is is, is I do, do a do a toilet god. Honestly, I, oh, do right. a poo. I'm calling do a. This is only a short god, right? Again, a minute what? obscure, but this is proper. I prefer little people gods. If you remember what happened at the beginning beginning of this podcast, Dan talked about a fear. I'm so scared. <sighs> right, you ready? Go on. The god, Gengawa. Gengawa. God of the celestial egg. Mate, it sounds like a video game. So, if there isn't something straight out of a video game, I don't know what is. Gengawa was a celestial goose. Mm. And if that wasn't enough, its name means Great Honker. Mate, I feel like... There's <laughs> <coughs> you. I apologise. Oh no, that, I'm sorry if that clipped your ears. I'm sorry he, he lost eardrums because of that. I'm really sorry. I might put a little beep. <laughs> that was shocking last yeah. time. <laughs> beep. So, she guessed it still. She guessed it. It didn't I, save us. Well, I think because there's only one person in the world who does that. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. We're a huge pantheon of, of, of listeners. Is <laughs> So if you're listening, <laughs> beep. <laughs> And so I wasn't no yeah thank you for listening yeah thank you <laughs> oh dear yeah anyway so gang away well um oh, don't hold it down so it, it names the great honker the great honker yeah so Gengawa the great I'm I'm learning that's, that's, I'm good that's gonna that's gonna stay so in Egyptian mythology it is said that Gengawa laid a great honking heavenly egg that contained the life force. Gengawa's job was to protect the life force. So, sorry, Egyptians, they did a bunch of, like, the, the strongest drugs, right? Of course, of course they did. Because they got, like, magical geese, like, laying magic eggs and, and honking. I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> and they worshipped that. They probably had, like, temples. Yeah. The great Gengawa. Honk. <laughs> Do you think they like bowed and honked? <laughs> yeah, everyone they, they put a little like, oh, yeah. I put a little rug out, bow. How many poetry on a honk? Well, mate, that's, that's, again, never heard of that. And it's and the thing is, right? You think, oh, oh, you're just making this up, James? Oh, you want it for like good context? No, I fucking Google didn't. It. I didn't fucking make it Google up. Google it. Don't just Google it. You need to look it up from where's my source. This is all key stage two stuff. Oh, this is actually yeah, okay. Education from the University of East Anglia. Okay, yeah, that, that sounds that sounds legit. Fact checked, fact checked. Not not Wikipedia. Oh, I can put something on there. Oh, Egyptians. There's there's Jamblor. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not show Wikipedia. Let's let's not the main source for everything. Right? Let's not. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, if Wikipedia's wrong, then so am I. So let's not fucking shit on Wikipedia. Like, come on. Yeah, that's that's basically every every fact I've done so far. It's just... Sixteen episodes of Wikipedia, yeah. basically. So it's just distilling Wikipedia to your ears. Sponsored by Wikipedia. Wikipedia. <laughs> I donate to Wikipedia. Do you? I have done. Yeah. I, I know I've done because they keep chasing me up for more and I'm like, no. Oh, fuck you. I think I've given them two pounds like three times. I, I, Six I, pounds. Yeah. Quick that math. was quick math, man. Mate. You can tell you work in finance. You can, I can just tell. Mm. Can I, hang, on, hang on, James. James, come, come here. Come here. There we go. I think that was for... Mm. Once we've done playback of slow motion, I think that's what for. You think there was a, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a different. So whose whose drink is fuller? <laughs> <laughs> you know how it goes. The drudgery of modern life chips away at you so much that you end up a numb husk of a human, cold, alone and trembling in the rain, miles from home. You think you see a light, so you walk towards it. The rain whips your naked flesh. The cold beads of rain run down your vulnerable back. Your feet tread on the sharp stones. Where are you? How far is that light? You realize far too late. The light is a torch. His torch. You turn to run, but it's too late. His lackeys pile on you and rain down kicks and punches. Everything goes black. And with all that, you don't want to have to worry about finding the best home insurance. We here at Ushore Insurance know that you've got enough to worry about, 
so you can be sure that we'll ensure you have the best insurance. Are you sure? You will be. We're sure of it. You sure insurance. We make sure that you're insure. Good. Okay, stupid cunts. Sorry. <laughs> apologies, apologies. All right, so you are... UFOs. UFOs. We're back to the land of the aliens. Where the aliens roam. Dog is whining. But now, like celestial eggs. this one is the big daddy. But I was trying to go chronologically, so I started with the ancient ancient times. And I've just jumped in ahead by like where's your, 400 where's years, your, right? Where's your dick? June 1947. <laughs> A rancher found debris on his property. Where did he live? Oh. Only fucking Roswell, New Mexico. <gasps> da, 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 da. So anyway, um, so this is a rancher, right? And he's all walking along. He's, 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 he's where he lives. And he's like, well, I saw all this crap on my land. I don't even know what his accent would be. What's New Mexico? I don't, I don't know about being offensive. I'm offensive to Americans. Come on. You can slag off Americans. I don't know because I, I think the word Mexican, and, uh, but then it's not. No, Mexican, no, it's not Mexican. No, they, no. They, they, they was Mexico. They stole it. America, no, sorry, America. I don't know, acquisition did. They probably bought it for like five or whatever. Uh, anyway, so so he's walking on all his land. He's like, watch this, goddamn here, dog, goddamn, goddamn. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know what. They, I don't know what they're saying. So he finds all this stuff. It's canvas, steel, rubber. There's just bits of wood, all kinds of shit all over his land, right? So he's like, what's all this shit? So some time passes. Seriously, James, what the fuck? <laughs> James just stood up and both of his knees exploded into dust. What that was, was that sound? That was your knees? That's my knees. <laughs> Dude, that's not right. I know, right? Do you need new knees? This is, this is why I have constant pain meds. <laughs> because they snap all the time. Give the man drugs. He needs drugs. Yeah. Drink more. For God's sake, your I, knees fell off. The thing is, I can't find your... your <sighs> Would you... Oh, my, my... Your penis. You, you, want, you want my cock? Um... <laughs> My bottle opener. Oh, there is. it is. <laughs> so I need Dan's wood. The bottle opener is a wooden penis. Just to understand, just he's he's not actually after my human penis. He's after my wooden penis. Got wood. Which mm. opens bottles. Thank as you. As well as his a very detailed penis. <laughs> Bought this from Crete. There's loads of them. They're everywhere. Yeah. They all have those magic eyes and everything. You see that in Greece? They have like the magic eye thing no. they have this like this eye on all the stuff you buy it's like eyes on it it's really weird and then they had just loads of wooden carved cocks everywhere with like bottle openers and handles and all kinds of shit it's like dicks it's like just cock obsessed it was like crazy cock obsessed and every third shop was a leather jacket shop <laughs> so cows don't get on well there they just have a bad time <laughs> lots of mooder um, anyway Roswell <laughs> shut up I'm sorry <laughs> Look, 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 there can't all be, all be winners, right? you just got to try these things, and sometimes it comes out bad. Um, anyway, so, now, so this rancher, right, he finds this shit on his land. He's like, oh, what the fuck's all this? Don't think about it for a while. Uh, about a month later, he hears about, because he's, he's not, he's, there's no radios and shit. He's, he's just out there fucking around. So a month later, he's in the local town, and he hears about, like, there's all this craze about, um, again, it's in the zeitgeist of flying saucers. There, there's all this like rumours and stuff of flying saucers. And he's like, I found some shit on my land. And everyone's like, what? The ears prick up. And they, so <laughs> he goes and gets it. And he, he phones the government. Because what you do back then, you're a conscientious person. You say, and the military come and they collect all the stuff. And But by this point, there's a lot of buzz about it. So they ask for a statement. So, uh, oh, right, well, I, I wrote that earlier. So I'm going to say it. So there was flying saucer craze at the time. And when he realised... Uh, a few months, a few weeks later, that there were all these bits might be something. He called the military, who collected all the bits, and they were asked for a statement. And they said they collected items which they believed uh, belonged to a flying disc. Now, this obviously made everyone go, oh my god, and come in their pants because it was just, they were like, fucking aliens, aliens are here, right? Now, obviously, the bits they found were bits of wood and canvas and, and metal and just shit, right? And paper. So they weren't fucking alien spaceship, right? So what actually happened was, then, and so this is a flying disc, they retracted the statement the following day, but by that point it was too late. Everyone was just like, oh, they're covering it up, they're covering it up. Um, everyone expected it was alien and they were trying to cover it up. Actually, what happened was, it had been a, sur a surveillance balloon. And this is all established. It was a surveillance balloon, but because it, it was a, a secret thing, they thought, what we'll do is we'll, we'll say the thing that will excite everyone, 
and then it doesn't matter how much we deny it, they'll think it was something else. Uh, they literally, on, on purpose, the, the, the head of the um, that local base made a quick decision like, I'll do this, this will buzz them up. Are you Googling it? No, no, oh. so, yeah, sorry. Oh, okay, but yeah, so they, um, so yeah, so it had been Sylvester Berlin, and they were trying to keep it secret. It was just basic misinformation. It was like just basic uh, subterfuge. They were like, okay, I'll say it's this, I'll deny it later, and then they'll all question it, and I want to, and there's an entire industry built around that place now. Like, there's, there's shops, museums, all this shit about a bunch of old like bits of balsa wood and, and canvas and shit from a fucking air balloon that was just a surveillance balloon. It's metal. Um, no amount of denial would stop the UFO homers. It's all established in fact that even today, 80 years later, people still believe there's more to it. They still believe there's some conspiracy. And it's this was established fact at the time. The, the, the record says I just found some wooden sticks and shit in my, my land. <laughs> Like there was just you know it's probably there might have been some mylar which is, looks a bit silvery and like sexy doesn't it looks a bit cool well, as our mylar ground. balloons but again it was just it was a balloon that just popped and landed on his land and he and that's it it's like Roswell New Mexico has an entire like the huge that, that entire place is and obviously there's there's not just the, the town itself there's shows series like episode yeah you know, all these films and stuff are built with that premise that there's aliens landed there there's yeah. TV shows there's special episodes there's I mean, that show Roswell and there's even a spin-off yeah. Roswell New Mexico which is another spin-off from that show um, there there's so much built around this fact and it's like the most famous alien encounter ever and it definitely didn't happen they're like I'm not saying aliens didn't land but like they didn't land there that was that was that was we know what that was that was nothing it was just a surveillance balloon that was it was 1947 it was the beginning of the cold war it was after the second world war they were being a bit sly they wouldn't want anyone to know it's been it was in the secrets act for a bit it's been released now everyone knows the records now they're out there it just no one gives a shit they don't want to know they want to live in this um so there's people who go to area 51 or you know in the area and they think oh this and it's just it's a military base they just they do shit there i'm sure they do secret shit there because it's military but it's not what if what if there was a balloon balloon up in up in the air mm. and went really high and the aliens would just go, Yeah, let's just let's take a left down here. Mm. And actually then they went towards Earth and they clipped the balloon. So the balloon exploded because it had an alien encounter. And the aliens were like, Oh shit they went down to look at it. Oh, that's right, it wasn't it wasn't the person, it wasn't the fellow alien. Let's go. Because they're making sure it's not hit and run. <laughs> so I mean I mean, sure, it's possible. I just think it's not inc- it's not very likely, is it? But yeah, so the, the, the Roswell, New Mexico, the, the most famous alien encounter was was complete bollocks. It was nothing. It was it was a complete damp squib. Damp, damp. Hmm. I like that. That's, that's very nice. <laughs> I was. You remember in the IT crowd, and he says like, he says, "It was a damp squid." Yeah. And um, they're like. You mean a damp squib? And he goes like, "What the fuck's a damp squib?" And he's like, "That's the, that's the term of the phrase." He's like, "No, a damp." So why would it be a damp squid? He's like, "Because it's it's not worth saying. Because it, of course a squid is damp." Well, well, yeah, that's that's why the phrase. That's why it is that way. And it's just like this because I don't know what a damp squib is, but I know what it means, and that's yeah. why I said it. So I might just stick with damp squid because I think that's more fun. You need to get that in conversation at least twice more in this podcast. Damp squid. Okay. Yeah. But it's got to be relevant. Oh, fuck, it's me tricky. Okay, yeah. it's fine. Cool. Challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. <laughs> you done with that fact? I am all facted out. Roswell's bullshit. Move on. Cool. I'm going to start the soap opera of the Egyptian neighbours, mate. Egyptians. We both went for soap The thing is, they've modernised all that shit now. Like, somebody I shan't name. My wife. She listens. She watches <laughs> Home and Away, and they they keep they try they keep modernise all the theme songs. Nah. Okay. Closer each day. Home and away, and it fucks me. I don't know why. It's just this weird. It's it's how Ed Sheeran was singing. It. It's just like <laughs> they're just like trying to modernise it, and it's just some type of acoustic guitar singing it, and you're like, oh, god damn. Dude, that's what I'm planning on doing. I'm going to rewrite. Theme tunes. That's my my next job is gonna be. I'm just gonna rewrite it. Yeah, just... yeah, mate. Oh, honestly, I'm gonna dye my hair ginger. I'm gonna grab a guitar. I can't play. I could do power chords. So can he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and do it, mate. Do it, do it. It's although powerful. on um, the guitar magazine I bought once, mm-hmm. I had the tab music for um, "Power of Love." 
Mate, I pack an ace out. Mate, that is a tune. Mate, and the guitar solo. Mate, I, I could do the fuck, but until we got to the windy, windy bit, I could do it. Me, some time, it might just save your life. It's the power of love. Only 30 seconds. Because they might think that's a TV recording, obviously. It might do, because it was. It was. Photo accurate that was. So from Huey Lewis to Osiris. Well, it's Huey Lewis and the news, and you're educating us, so it kind of makes sense. Mate, it's a proper tie-in. Hold on. Egyptian. (laughs) 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 So. I apologise. Look, from now on, we can't have little bowls to play with no, like children. No, we just have to drink out glasses, like, because yeah, it's yeah. can't be trusted. And not spinny ones which go on the table like the first episode oh, of no. <laughs> so noisy. Call the police. You want me that, you fucking fuck. <laughs> anyway, um... So, you say, Osiris, this is, this is on the, the first two characters of the uh, episode. Okay. So, background music, I like here. <laughs> Sounds a crypt. <laughs> Osiris, one of Egypt's most important deities, was a god of the underworld. He also symbolised death, resurrection, and the cycle of the Nile floods that Egypt realised, relied on. Sorry, a spelling mistake. Was a, um, relied on for agricultural fertility. According to the myth, Osiris was a king of Egypt who was murdered Dead. and dismembered by his brother, Seth. <laughs> his wife, Isis, um, resembled, uh, reassembled his body and resurrected him, allowing them to conceive their son, the god Horus. Hmm. Lots of names there. So, right, so basically, Cyrus died by his brother, Seth Rogen. He cut him up. Yeah, no, no. I get that. Oh, sorry, you said... Didn't he say... Dis- he... Dismembered. Yeah. Yeah, that is... is... Yeah, dismembered. You shouldn't dismember so... your bro. You shouldn't do that. No, no. It's, it's a bit of a dick move. Dick move. So, his wife, Isis. The origins of Isis are obscure. Unlike many gods, she can't be tied to a specific town. And, she, that, and there's no certain mentions of her in the earliest Egyptian literature. Over time, she grew in importance through eventually becoming the most important goddess in the pathogens. As the devote <clears throat> as the devoted wife to the resurrected Horus after his murder and the rise of their son. Horus Isis is it uh, sorry, my my grammar is not my forte right now. Um as the devoted wife who resurrected Osiris after his murder and raised their son, Horus Isis embodied the traditional um, Egyptian virtues of wife and mother and the wife of the gods of the underworld. Uh, Isis also was one of the main deities concerned with the rights of the dead. Isis acted as a divine mourner. Uh, so basically, she uh, resurrected her, um, her husband after Seth Rogen <laughs> killed so they're, they're all tied in. So just keep that in mind for part of the story. All right? But, mate, there's some um, gods of the underworld. It's like, it's like people who die. She was known to talk talk to people who die. So you're like, I'm dead. Oh, I'm in the underworld. Oh, what's going on? Then she was sort of talk to you. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, no, I'm dead. Oh, dear. Oh, shit. Oh, oh pants. <laughs> I'm down in this big underworld cave. I stubbed my toe. Fuck all. Oh. But yeah, so she. Oh, all damp. All damp. <laughs> you need to get good for that. There's one down here somewhere. He does toilets. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Dehumidifying God. <laughs> Splashy or something. Don't, don't get around to S- Stephen. <laughs> Stephen. He said, like, I was a shark once. <laughs> oh dear. So yeah, so Cyrus and Isis. Mm. So. Mm. Isis died. Oh. Isis brought him back to life. Oh, good. Then they made the Boom Boom Times. Smash up. And they made Horus. Fuck. Horus, their now son. Horus. And Seth Rogen. 
who was the uh, brother who, who killed. So that's where we are so far. Okay. End of part one. Adverts. Dan. Have you ever eaten horse? Maybe you would like... No, that's not like that. <laughs> um, Okay, so I'm going to talk... I'm actually going to go back in time a little bit because I just thought, Ross, well, I need to get us sort of that settled, right? So, again, it's all with alien encounters or, or sightings. It all seems to be in areas of, like, of popularising of, of, of certain things, right? So the flying saucer thing was in the 40s and 50s and it was just... That was the fucking... That was the thing. And that's largely inspired a lot of... I mean, you think of the day the Earth said still, always that, it was all flying saucers. And then that became... Because once TV and movies had come in, then everything sort of just stayed. Because it was just... There were certain tempos that people kept going back to. So a flying saucer's never really fucked off after the, the 50s because they started being in films and now the visual medium. So now it's just locked in. But before then, right? So in the 1890s in the States, there were loads of... Uh, mystery airship or phantom airships now airships were they weren't really a big deal yet they were starting to trial them using them uh, as means to get around but they weren't really not in the in the, the, the sightings they were seeing were not real airships they couldn't have been because they, they were that advanced at that point right so but people were sort of you know aware that they existed to some extent so it was. It wasn't. It wouldn't have been a huge stretch to imagine a more advanced airship down the way. And also, if it's a spaceship. It's not a fucking airship, is it? So <laughs> we we know going in. It's like I saw an airship. It's an alien. Like we know aliens aren't going to travel fucking light years and then fucking use an airship to get around the earth. It's just stupid. But anyway, <laughs> now but I've shit on the fact before I even said it. So that's. Very, it's like but, alien rent a car. Oh, are you going to Earth? Are you going to go there by Bazorgzog? Well, when you get there, you need an airship. Yeah, that's, that's the smoothest way to get around. <laughs> Um, no better suspension than air. Oh. Um, so the mystery airship or phantom airship phenomenon was uh, was it was a phenomenon that uh, thousands of people across the United States claimed to have observed from the late 1896 to mid 1897. Um, so the common elements of the descriptions included bright lights, cigar-shaped bodies, wings, and metallic hulls. Reports of the alleged crewmen and pilots usually described them as human-looking um, people that they saw, although. Sometimes the crew claimed to be from Mars. It was popularly believed that the mystery airships were the product of some inventor or genius who was ready to make a knowledge of his creation public. That was expected. But this is the time. You had, um, you obviously had Tesla, you had, um, um, you, you had all these like great inventors at the time. It's not such a big thing, thing now. Right? But like that then, you had f- famous inventors. People thought, oh, it's about to kick off. They really did. Um, so... Uh, it's been frequently argued that the mystery airships are unlikely to represent test flights of genuine dir- dirigibles, as no record of su- successful, sustained, or long range airship flights are known from the period, and it would have been impossible, not to mention irrational, to keep such things secret. There were, in fact, several functional airships manufactured before the 1896 97 reports. Um, they were successful air you know, flights and stuff, but the capabilities were far more limited than these mystery airships that were witnessed. So. Um, the American newspapers of the yellow journalism era were more likely to print manufactured stories and hoaxes than modern news, news sources now, even though, you know, even the more than the, the sun, you know, or like modern ones, they were far less accountable. There was almost no legal framework to make them tell the truth. Hmm. So newspapers back then would bullshit. They would make up anything. It didn't fucking matter. So um, the, the whole era was, was sort of known with that. They, 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 had, they had, you know, we have to get this printed by a certain time make something up <laughs> that was not uncommon at all so no, with with that moving forward you sort of know okay well fair enough so the late 19th century often would have expected the reader to understand that such stories were false because they knew there was a narrative there was an understanding it's like I'm saying a thing I'm presenting it as true but I also understand that it might not be um hang on a sec oh god don't don't it's fucking stupid so did you just get a message for you? Yeah. I don't even know what's going on there. I won't look into that. I'll just... I'll, <laughs> I'll look into that in a minute. Um, so... Blah, blah, blah. Most journalists... Yeah, so, so they, they understood it was not true. Most journalists of the period did not seem to take the airship reports very seriously as after the major 1896-97 uh, wave concluded and there were lots... As I say, there were thousands of reports. It was right across the States as well, primarily in California. Subject quickly fell from public consciousness. The airship stories received further attention 
only after the 1896-97 newspaper reports were largely rediscovered in the mid-1960s and the UFO investigators of the era suggested the airships might represent earlier precursors to the post-World War II UFO sightings. Mm. It's, ju- it's just this hysteria that's sort of like, it's like the hot-button issue at the time and it's 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 no different than that. Remember that fucking uh, white and blue dress, or was it blue and? Oh, is it blue? Yeah. Is it white? Is it? Yeah, blue? Is it's, it like, it's, oh. it's just that was everywhere, and it just it entered the zeitgeist. It entered the public consciousness, and it's the same thing. There was these like you know, and all the encounters, everything they saw was as per expected, and then flying saucers were a big thing, and all of a sudden everyone saw flying saucers. It's just once the thoughts in there, people's imaginations do the rest, and they start making reports. That's like saying you don't see blue cars anymore. Yeah. Then all you see is fucking blue cars. Yeah. I like, haven't even got a blue car. No. Is it blue? Is it grey? Hmm? I don't know. It's dark. It could be blue. Every, I think it might all be blue. Yeah. Who knows? But yeah, interesting. Off the back of the multi award winning film Horse Hats the Movie, here is Horse Hats the Game. You are Sebastian the Horse, running through levels, trying to find the perfect headgear, collecting coins and sugar cubes on your way. Whilst trying to avoid the evil jockey Duncan. Fucking Duncan. Once you find Dan and James and collect your stylish horse hat, you now have all the power to get that jockey. And like Dan says, punch him in the dick. Fuck you, Duncan. Available on good consoles. And you can download and play. Produced by the creators of Whiskey, Wine and Wisdom. I'm timing some Egyptian gods now. With Horus, so Oops. the son of Dead Resurrected and uh, uh, Dead One and Iris, their son, Horus, depicted as a falcon or as a man with a falcon's head. Horus was a sky god associated with war and hunting. He was also the embodiment of the divine kingship and in some eras a uh, regional king. Sorry, kingship. And in some years, he was the original king and was considered to be the manifestation of Horus. Horus was the son of Isis and Horus, magically conceived after the murder of Isis by his brother, Seth. Horus. <laughs> 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 That's really good, man. Really adding flavour to this. It's oh, good. All right. <laughs> Horus was raised uh, to avenge his father's murder. Murder. Father! One tradition holds that Horus lost his left eye fighting with Seth, but this is cool. But his eye was magically healed by the gods. For so T H O T F Thoth. Thoth. <laughs> it's like Jonathan Ross is trying to tell me Thoth, um, because his right eye and left eyes of Horus were associated respectively with the sun and moon. The loss and the restoration of Horus's left eye gave the mythical es- explanation of the phases of the moon. So like the moon, half moon, full moon, all this sort of stuff is association because yeah, you know, he had a well, he's blinking, is he? I don't know. I I, I thought that so it was like that that eagle hawk man, his eyes are basically the sun of the moon, and he lost a bit of an eye. Oh, he's coming back. So the the the, the moon is going. I'm gone from quarter moon, slice moon. Half moon, three quarters of moon. Oh, I got my vision back. Full moon. You're starting to make Scientology sound better. <laughs> it's 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 a bit of a. It's very silly. Oh, it's, it's Egypt, though, isn't it? They got, oh, that guy's man bear pig. <laughs> I got bubble in my throat. Man bear pig. Man, man bear pig. That's what I heard. Yeah, he's the god of bears he's and man, man bear pig. <laughs> he's a man bear pig. Sorry, no. Is he a man bear pig? Was he a man bear pig? Thank you, creators of South Park. Well, let me take this one. I don't know. <laughs> or pick and boom. But yeah, so that's um, that's that's the Horus. And then Throth. I'm going to call him Throth. Fuck it. T-H-O-T-H. Look it up. So Throthy Gash. So was a god of writing and wisdom uh, that could be depicted as a form of baboon. So he was p- depicted in the form of a baboon um, or a scarab... Ah, oh, do you know what? They use lots of words, which is lots of syllables mm. on there, so... Ah, oh, dear. Depicted in the form of a baboon or a scarred abyss uh, or is a man with the head of an abyss. A-B-I-S. 
Um, he was believed to have invented the language and the hieroglyphic script and serve as a scribe and advisor for the gods. As the gods of wisdom, Thoth was said to possess knowledge and magical secrets unavailable to other gods. In underworld things showing the judgments undergone by the, de the deceased after their deaths. Thoth is depicted as weighing the hearts of the deceased and reported the verdict on Isis and the god of the dead. So he's a bastard. He's, he's, he does lots of god things. He's like assessing you. Oh, you're dead. I've got your heart. Are you good? Are you bad? Where are you going to go to? He's, yeah, he's sort of weighing it all in, but he sorted out Isis with the eyes and stuff. Mate, they're all linked. They're crazy Egyptians. There's a lot. There's lots of them. Silly, isn't it? I oh, know. It's, it's silly. very silly. But the, 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 I find them interesting, and when when I've not had a drink and I'm reading them properly, it makes more sense. So I do, I do apologise, everyone. <laughs> no, I do. That shouldn't make sense. That's, that's yeah. just you know, it just is. You can't you can't make sense of that. That's fucking silly. But then my next fact, which I'll say for afterwards, is okay. all, it's all about Seth. <laughs> 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 Before he made films and <laughs> cool. Okay. Aliens. Aliens. On Friday, March fifth of a year, the Mexican Air Force pilots using infrared equipment to search for drug. It was twenty eleven actually. I just didn't write it down. Um, using infrared equipment to search for drug smuggling aircraft. I know in Mexico it's crazy. Um, <laughs> recorded eleven unidentified objects over southern Campeche. Mexico's Defense Department issued a press release on May 12th, accompanied by videotape that was showed bright moving lights at 11,500 feet. Mexican ufologist James Mousen interpreted the videotape as proof of alien visitation, because of course he fucking did, it's his job. But science writer and skeptic Michael Shermer, who had a book I've written, he's a very, very smart guy, was critical of the witness account that varied wildly saying it was like a fisherman's tale growing with each retelling. Other experts suggested the lights were most likely burn off flares on offshore oil platforms in the Gulf of Mexico. This was a huge story for several months uh, until the theory of the burn-off flares from the local, I think it was a BP or platform, was confirmed. That's ringing the bell. Yeah, it was, Sorry, a, big, yeah, it was yeah. a big deal. Big, I think yeah. it was probably about 10 years ago. Um, but it was just like, it because it was seen by so many people, they were like, fucking aliens! And it was valid, verified that we don't know what it is by the Mexican Air Force. So everyone got... It was the, like a very recent case of everyone shit their pants. Uh, and because there was actual footage, everyone was like, this is a real thing. Um, yeah, it's kind of mad. So, but yeah, I, I think there's a lot of, lot, lot of footage and a lot of things knocking around. And you can still, you, if you go online right now and say alien sighting, you'll see like, you know, there's 20 or 30 videos you'll see over and over again uh, with generally... Uh, either AI voices over the top going, you won't believe what this thing is. You know, everyone is waiting for this video to come out yeah. now. You know, oh. you know, they won't. You won't believe what happens next. They'll have that over and over again. Mm. But it's yeah, there are a bunch of videos, but most of them, most of them are just mylar balloons. Like if you look at them objectively, you go, that's a fucking mylar balloon. But this was a recent one. This was kind of recent. It was footage. People were recording on their phones. It was actually a, a properly a buzz, and then later on they're like, "Nah, that was just a bunch of flares, cunt. It's fine." And they were just burning off. So good flares supposed to burn off. <sighs> Sorry, dick fuck dogs coming back. <laughs> that was a nice sound. Sorry. Yeah. Hey, you nice you won't know this, but there's a uh, velociraptor in the corner of the room. <laughs> Hello, Dogford. How have we not seen him before? What's back, this new one? Back on the dogcast. Well, welcome back to Whiskey Wine and Stanley's Corner. Stanley Corner. <laughs> 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 you tit. Anyway, um, but yeah, that was a little, I suppose a smaller one, but it was just uh, a recent one. And interestingly, was squashed and sort of like validated. Because, you know, like there's more... There's more records now. Like we can look at things more objectively. There's more. Everyone's got. Everyone's got a camera in their pocket, and the camera they have in their pocket is better than anything that existed 20 years earlier and for the whole rest of history. So really, if there are aliens banging around, we should have huge amounts of footage of it. Yeah. And there is footage, but it tends to be from aircraft. And the big, the big, the big fucker with aircraft is that aircraft is very fast. 
So when they see things, they go, I can't believe the speed of this thing. And I'm like, well, no, because you're, you're, it was filmed on a plane, which is doing like 400 miles an hour, and it flew past it. So it looks really fast because we're not used to seeing things that fast. Like we can't really, like you're in a plane, it doesn't feel like you're going, like if you're in a commercial plane, you do 600 miles an hour. Do it. You know, I'm saying it doesn't, well, you're not doing that, I don't think you're doing that fast, it's three, 300 or something, right? But I'm saying like you're going faster than you've ever been. If you're, on, you're, like, you're in a car, you're 100 miles an hour, you're shitting your pants, right? Yeah. If you're on a plane, you're doing three times that, and it doesn't feel like anything because there's no reference point. When you see something zoom past you, you're like, oh my God, that was so fast. I'm like, no, it wasn't. That could have been stationary. Yeah. You're going so fast, you don't even understand. So when they see something, I was like, look at the speed of this thing. I'm like, it's filmed from a plane, you bell end. <laughs> it looks super fast. It might not have been moving at all. It might literally have been a fucking... Mylar balloon, or you know, some because they're all they still chuck up loads of weather balloons and they have these giant mylar sails on them. They're just these big, it looks like silvery and shiny and everything, so it looks like a spaceship, but it's just a big fuck off balloon which they have hang instruments off and they do them all the time. They do them all the time. So if a plane goes past it, they go, it's a fucking alien. And like, if you look at them, all this footage is going around, like, in most cases, that's what it is. Um, in this one, obviously, this instance, it was flares, but um. Looking into all this, I, I got my sceptic on quite hard because it was just like, oh, it's a box, isn't it? And all the ufologists are just like, must be aliens. This will be aliens. This must be aliens. Hmm. And the fact that they're so desperate, it kind of speaks to how unconvincing a lot of the stuff is, which is a bummer because I really like, I do want to believe. I think it'd be really cool. I do believe there's aliens out there. It's got to be, uh, I've got no, no way of proving anything. Oh, I think there's got to be something. We can't be the only things around. They, they might not be local. They might not be around the corner. No, I mean, what's likely? Um, I mean, so certainly the solar system, there's almost no chance of something else here in the solar system. And then you think, okay, well then, how likely is it? I mean, like, 100% they're out there. I can't say 100%, but like, there's... <laughs> al it's almost improbable Facts. There's, there's nothing else out there. But if there's something else out there, it's like it being in any kind of reasonable distance, that's when it starts to get a bit shady. You'd have to be able to travel at like fantastic, impossible to our knowledge speeds to make it like they could just come around here just to have a look. <laughs> I mean, it would almost be, if they're like, I don't know, light years away, it's almost like immoral to go that far just to have <laughs> a little shifty, you know, and then just, to, okay, we're going to kill some cows and, you know, like violate a few farmers in their assholes. It's like, it's, I just, that that's what I find a bit like questionable. Yeah. It's like, dude, the, the, to the tech, they might have been in suspended animation for their like they've not gonna see their family ever again to come over here to play with your butthole. You really <laughs> think you're so up your own ass you think that they are too. It's it's very strange. What's more likely is, you know, some weird guy called Colin just like play with your ass in some alleyway and you got a bit too methed out to understand what's going on and you're just like, Oh, it's aliens I'm like, Yeah, I bet you think it was. <laughs> I hope it was for you, but uh, I don't th I don't think it was, mate. I think you just made some life choices. But anyway, um, Egypt. Egypt. So, quick summary. Isis is very important. Underworld. Died from brother. His bird. Brought him back to life. Yep. They done the, the for donk donk They conceived the son, Horus. Um, yeah, had mm. fights with Seth. He had a bit of a dicky eye. And the four, Throff, as I've called Throff. Throff was the... Fixed his eyes. Yes. Was um, he his son? I can't... No, no, he was just a god, just uh, of, god. of wisdom. Ah, uh, yes. Not of whiskey and wine, though. No, well, he wasn't invented it yet. No, exactly. He might have invented it all, though. He might be a uh, patron god. Yeah, well, well. So, so the family's all about to go, all lovely, oh. but Seth, the bastard. Fucking prick. Seth was oh. a god of <laughs> chaos, violence, deserts, and storms. In the Oasis myth... He is the murderer of Oasis. In some versions of the myth, he tricked Oasis into laying down in the coffin and then he sealed it shut. So that was one. So yeah, in the first fact, I see he's like dismembered and then other myths are saying that they say, like, he, he, go, go lie down in that coffin, see what happens. Ha ha ha. Then I sealed it shut. That's what he's done. He deserves it then. That's yeah. the dumbest thing ever. All right. Go and lie down in that coffin, try it out. <laughs> try it. Promise I won't close it. Honest, honest, bro. <laughs> So Seth, though, right? So he he possesses. Um, sorry, Seth's appearance. He mm. poses a problem to the Egyptian Egyptologists. He is often depicted as an animal, or as a human. 
Oh, yeah, 50 50. Um, with the head of an animal, but they can't figure out what the animal he's supposed to be. He actually has a big, long snout and long ears that are squared at the tips. So his, his fully animal form, um, he has a thin dog like body and a straight tail with a tuft at the end. Mate, honestly, they go, oh, this guy's Seth, right? Let's draw him like a weird dog, mole nose, weird, straight eared, weird. That's why he's he's, he's like trying to deal off his family because he looks special. He's, he can't. They all look a bit special, don't they? Mate. He's a bit of an animal. Pepperami, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, long skin. Oh my god. Aid Edmondson, Aiden Aiden Edmondson, Edmondson ancient yeah. Egypt, mate. <laughs> Remake the young ones today. <laughs> I'm Seth, bit of an animal. Oh. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh. No, do not. No. Is someone knocking at the door? I've been banned. Too off. sad. It's too sad. Oh. We'll resurrect Rick Mail and we need to make that I, show. I can't. Yeah. Oh, honestly. Dude, legend. So funny. Funny fuck. Let's go over. Legend. Yeah. Captain of industry. Yeah. But that, that's basically my, my say proper. There you go. Brothers. Killed. Wife. <laughs> erected. Resurrected. Husbands. They'd done stuff. So you brought back, brought back from dead, just so yeah. she could shag him. Yeah. So, hey, yeah. that's that's a bit. That's a bit. Let give him a minute. Fucking hell. Yeah. If I've been dead, I I think I need a bit of a recharge time just to get like. But when you think that these gods, they can like. So I'm I'm dead. I've gone to the underworld. I'm speaking to this other god. Oh, you're in you're in the underworld now. Let's let's talk. Oh, oh so right. Oh, your wife's your wife's bringing you back up. Oh, off you go. Yeah. So we we all right. Dirty talking, right? You know, yeah, real talk. Okay. So, gods. Yeah. Now, obviously, we are raised in a fairly Christian society. So, when mm. we talk of God, we talk about the omnipotent, uh, omnipresent, you know, all powerful God. Yeah. Uh, these guys can get like tricked. They can get locked in coffins. You know, like things that you think you're a God. You can get out of a coffin. I mean, like. Mm. You're, I'm trapped in a box I don't know what I'll do it's like so I just they seem like just a bunch of people rather than gods I don't know what the criteria is to make them gods like they, they die so they don't live forever they're not uh, they're not like, omnip- omnipresent they're not omnip- omnip- omnipotent because they, they die and they don't seem like they're particularly powerful and I feel like they're just a bunch of cunts aren't they it's a bit of a I've got a fact it's something because there's one of the one of the gods that makes the gods and mm. Jesus he's gonna be here and stuff is meh So it's the god bod, the god god god. God of god bod. God of gods. Yeah, there's a residual keep this today's message. I've got lots honestly, all, all the main gods I've wrote down laser facts about them. Didn't realise I'm not gonna be able to read them all out. But um Mate, that's that's why I went with those first ones because this is a safe part of mm. uh, Egyptian neighbours and stuff like that. It does sound a bit, a bit dramas, a bit dramas. Yeah. Because there's obviously there's the um, the other awesome ones. There's there's Ra, which they call Re, but then they go brackets Ra. But I've always known them as Ra. Re Ra. And there's um, Amnibus Ledge, um, so as the uh, funeral uh, practices takes care of the dead. He's usually represented as a jackal. Jackal, 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 jackal. 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 They is one I always know. He's the cool one. Um, That's pretty good, me. Then there's there's Amon, Amon Horms. <laughs> um, so a- Amon, uh, the god that was, was worshipped like the um, uh, was we well, use the god of air, and uh, his name probably. This is the thing. So I'm looking at his face. So Amon, right? Amon was the god of air, and his name probably means hidden one. I don't know why they say probably. It's just a bit of a. Eamon. Eamon Holmes? That's, that's it. That's it. I've, got, um, I've got another famous one. Hathnor. Or Hathor. Hathor. That sounds. Oh, Hathor, yeah. Hathor would be also. World's strongest man! I was going to say it sounds Nordic, but okay. Yeah. Um, but. Goddess. The goddess Hath- Hathor. Hathor's a girl's name? Yeah. Oh, the mountain. What are you playing at? <laughs> he, he's big, but, but mate. Yeah. I'm a princess. <laughs> I'm a lifty lifty all the way. It's do 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 sweet pump do do do. Have you seen him with his missus? No. Oh yeah yeah. She's tiny. She's tiny. 
I mean, poor girl. Yeah. Fucking hell. And like, they've had kids together. I'm like, bloody hell. Because <laughs> he has like mountain children, right? His children are bigger than her. Yeah. They're like, how do you even do that, girl? He's like, yoga instructor. It's just like, she's just... It's like, it's insane. You oh, know? we're going to have a date night? Yeah. Oh, what have we got? Always oh, a nice step up meal. Have some diazepam as well for later on because <laughs> we're going like, to do some stuff. Yeah. It's <laughs> a muscle relaxant because uh, <laughs> I'm feeling it. She's like, oh my lord. That's the reason why they call me the mountain. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just not like a regular human and she's she's just dinky. It's just like, oh lord. Oh lord, lord. But H- Hathor, the, the, the goddess, goddess. Mate, these Egyptians are bastards. Depicted with the head of a cow. Mm. Bloody cow. Yeah. And she was the uh, motherhood and fertility. Yeah, lots of um, baby stuff. But yeah. Mm. So that's... Um, other gods, again, awesome. Amen. But you got some uh, some crazy ones up next. I think. Oh, brilliant. I think I'm just going to go straight. Because I've done, I've done my story. There's just some fucking dramas, man. They're just... Because I got... always thought there's there's Egypt's, right? You do this, you do that, you do that, you do that. Job mm. done. I didn't realise it's all entwined. So was... Well, I think they all fuck about a bit. I mean, like, I know Greek gods were like that, but the Romans were far more methodical. Hang on, a quick, quick drinky. <sighs> okay, so uh, I'm on. Um, I've done that one. Oh, I've got, I've got, I've got two left. Shit. You got two. Yeah. Okay. Um, now this is a recent one. So when they made them UA, uh, what are they called, UAPs, right? That was after the Pentagon UFO videos were released. Um, so they are selected visual recordings uh, of FORR, um, which is, oh, it's photo imaging. I can't remember the actual acronym. It doesn't fucking matter. It's basically, it looks like black and white, but it's basically just um, really wide spectrum imaging of, um, they have cameras on planes. Uh, targeting from the US States Navy fighters jets uh, based aboard the aircraft carrier USS Nimitz and the USS Theodore Roosevelt 2004, 2014 2015 with additional footage taken by other Navy personnel in 2019 there's four grainy monochromatic videos widely characterised as officially documenting UFOs uh, and have received extensive coverage in the media since 2017 the Pentagon later addressed and officially released the first few videos of unidentified aerial phenomenon which is yeah, UAP in 2020 and confirmed, this is the thing is, it's government acknowledging the fact that they're UAPs or UFOs. Um, they confirmed the provenance of the leaked 2019 video in two statements made in 2021. So all these four videos have come out, and they're the first time that the US government has come out and said, yes, legitimately, these are verified. We do sanction these, these are real. Uh, footage of UAPs was also released in 2023, sources from MQ-9 military drones. Uh, writing in the New York Times, the author and astrophysicist Adam Frank stated that with respect to claims of evidence of extraterrestrial, uh, extraterrestrial technology that can defy the laws of physics, the pilot's reports and cockpit instrumentation videos does not amount to much. Uh, Frank speculated that it was possible the UFOs in the videos are drones deployed by rivals like Russia and China to examine our defences, luring our pilots into turning on their radar and other detectors, thus revealing our electronic intelligence capabilities. So he... Because they were on known flight paths, he and his people they said like, it seems like they're there just to provoke a response, so that, you know, like just to shit you up, right? Um, astronomer Thomas Banya speculated that they could be some form of electronic <laughs> warfare fielded by China and Russia, trying to get intelligence of exactly what our weapon systems are capable of doing. Basically, the same idea. Um, security expert Jack Weinstein said <laughs> that neither of these countries presented presently. Um, this is uh, he's, I've actually written a podcast with this guy he's very smart um, he's saying that neither of these countries presently have the capability to produce aircraft and such extraordinary capabilities and noted that they would normally keep any such high level technology from being observed and documented by a rival country as the US so maybe it must be he basically he, he doesn't say it's aliens but he suggests it might be now I've seen these, these, these videos this was a big deal uh, a couple of years ago when it came out I don't remember a suggestion as well but it's it's yeah. You know, there's one where there there's a few there's, they follow it for like twenty minutes. There's just this flight and then it just goes up, just goes disappears. Yes. Um, it was a big deal and it was just like they could not uh, understand the speed at which it moved. Uh, and there was another fighter group that was uh, about hundred miles away and it flew from one to the other. So certainly yeah. Of all the stuff I've 
found, that's the one that I'm like, well, that's something. It's and you hear the pilots, you can hear them talking, going, what, the, what the fuck? Because they just don't know what they know what it is. They don't understand. They're up there, and they're in, you know they, they might be in trouble. They don't know what it is. No. You know, are they should they be scared of this thing? Um, you can't see details. You can't really see. It's a very grainy footage. It's not very clear, but it's something. Uh, and it's of all the stuff I've heard and seen, it's just like that's the one thing that you're like, well, that there's no reasonable explanation. It's definitely because the, the speed it's moving, it is big enough. It's something. Yeah. At one point, I think it goes under the water, it comes back out again. Oh no! It moves around in ways that just nothing else that flies can. So, to suggest, oh, it's just like a Chinese drone or something. It's like I think you're giving them way too much credit. Like, <laughs> like this, like if they had something that awesome, they wouldn't be flapping it around nah. just to shit you up. So, um, uh, you know, like there's a certain amount of secrecy they have when they develop technologies in 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 uh, military circles. But as soon as they have something that's viable, they advertise the actual shit out of it, because it's 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 just a big like fuck you to like a rival country. Like there's some new uh, Russian um, oh what the fuck it, uh, stealth plane, and they're going on about how amazing it is. It pisses all over the uh, the, the American one, but it's not it doesn't exist yet. They've made it. Yeah. It's just literally they're, they're trialing it. But they're they're bigging it up, and it doesn't even you know like the idea that it's a big secret thing is like no, they (laughs) want they want you to know they've got you know it's like it's basically like everyone's got (laughs) like I've got a massive cock, but I'm never gonna let you know fact. But they're like, well, I'm gonna wear very tight trousers, and you're gonna know because I kind (laughs) of want you to know. Because no, you know, no one wants, to, no one's advertising a small dick, but everyone's advertising a big dick, and that's what it is. It's a big dick contest. So if you have the biggest dick, you don't keep it secret. You don't. You just don't. Um, and that's what it is. That's what it's what these things are. So if they had, if a rival country had that sort of drone technology or some sort of, you know, planes that move around that fast, you'd know about it. They would be saying, check out, and you, they, they do test flights in a really blatant way. You know, North Korea does like we're doing nuke flights and nuke tests and stuff, right? Yeah. Everyone fucking knows every time. There's no, they're not doing that on the sly. That's, there's nothing sly about them. They have to do it. The whole point is that you know about it. That's the whole point of it. It's the whole point of any military technology. So, um, yeah, I think in that instance, there's no real benefit to anyone keeping it secret. No one knows of anyone doing it, and it, there's something definitely in multiple footage, um, multiple recordings, film with multiple pilots, and they're all regular pilots. They're not like fuck quick weirdos you know like I'm a ufologist no they're, they're, they're you know they are professional pilots um, and so yeah I, that, that's that's actually of all the things I've looked at that's the first thing I'm like well, maybe mm. maybe your face has, has changed on that fact you, I can see I can see Mo- more. most things are bollocks or, or, or if you look at that it's like most um, conspiracy theories if you look at any of that stuff it's all bollocks but that's like mm. that's um, plus drinks kicking in so you know yeah <laughs> that, that, that does help Oh yeah, I've got that. Yeah. Is that one? I'm more done on that one. I was walking down the street, looked down at my feet, and there were flaps. Brushing my hair, but I realised my hair was flaps. Eat a piece of cheese, but actually the cheese was flaps. Oh no, it's flaps. Try a bloody great. Flaps. Come on down to Dave's Crab Shack. We got crabs all over the dang place. Come eat some. We got melted butter. Come try our crab witch. We need to get rid of some of these damn crabs. They're everywhere. My shoes are full of crabs. My car's full of sand crabs. My wife's gone. I think it was the crabs. I'm not okay, guys. I'm not okay, guys. Please, I'm begging you. They're in my dreams. I think I'm becoming a crab. Dave's Crab Shack. Just take, just, just take a left behind you, man. Oh, so my next fact. Egyptian god, Casey Chaos. It's just a holiday for you. So, Egyptian god, Casey Chaos. No, he's not. No, he's called Kenti Chaos. And that's just what reminded me of it. Nice, nice, yeah. yeah. Um, was, was the god of noses of the dead. Oh, for fuck's sake, the noses <laughs> of the dead. So he just deals exclusively with corpse noses. If he, I, I've always noticed this. Um, <laughs> nose this is, yeah, yeah. No, nose this. Oh. You look at statues of, of um, Egyptian gods and stuff like that, statues, sometimes they've got their nose clipped off. Loads of them are. Yeah, it's, it's a weird, I saw this thing about recently, because, yeah, there's huge amounts, obviously, we know about the Sphinx, but there's, yeah, huge amounts of them have had their noses whacked off. 
Do you know why? Uh, no, no, I, this is, you go on. Learn them. Hmm. Go on, please. So, and the award for the most obscure job of the king of the Egyptian gods goes to Kenti Kass, who is responsible for protecting the noses of the deceased. And clearly, Kenti Kass had his work cut out for him. Ho, ho, ho. Many Egyptian statues were vandalised by ancient Egyptian people who believed that chopping off a statue's nose would kill any part of that person's spirit still living inside the statue. So you go, that person, oh, they made a statue of Tutankhamun. Oh, fuck it, chop his nose off. Then he won't, he, there's nothing left of him then. That's it's mean. like your last embodiment, they believe they're still in the statues. That's mean. So that's why there's lots, because I've always noticed this, it wasn't until I read that fact that I go, actually, mate, you can see yeah, that a lot. But yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. This is, um, that's been something that has been accrued for a long time. I suppose if they know that, you don't understand the cultural, cultural significance of a nose. No. Your soul knows. But no one knows. <laughs> I wouldn't sniff at that fact. Oh, <laughs> this is, this is, we're in that point, we're in that sort of the James zone when <laughs> this shit comes out. Oh dear. Oh my dear. So when I, when I talk about these these gods and things being um, you know, tradesmen, check a trade, check a trade dots, something dot org, I'm not going to go. Nice, nice. Yeah. They don't get it for free. No. They don't get it for free. We get a check, we talk yeah. that shit. So you could you could hire head joped, head head joped, head head joped. What's that? No, head joped. Head joped. Head joped. Head joped. Yeah. Hedge head 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 yeah. The god of fabric. Oh, for fuck. <laughs> Do you need a soup? You need to go to head to chip step. You were close to it. It's like you're like. That bag's looking old and tawdry. You need a new bag. Just come down to Hedge Teps. Bag Emporium. We make the best bags out of the finest... We've <laughs> just done another advert. <laughs> it's going to be ad heavy this week. No no nose required. No nose required. Because <laughs> we nose the best nose is the ones who don't nose the truth. <laughs> crocodile skin. Um, crocodile skin pa- 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 Papyrus. Um... <laughs> Sand. Mm. That's all we got. Mm, dear. One of those three. So head head tape. I'm going to call Steve, right? So Steve um, was mm. said to have invented clothing, and was responsible of creating um, clothes for the pharaohs, the gods, and the deceased. He invented clothes. Yeah. So no one thought to put a thing over the thing. No, nah, no one. No Fucking. One. That's a big. I mean, mm. I don't know, man. I'm not sure. So, uh, not a lot is known of. Um, Maybe head, the other more closed. No, he's full of shit. Well, this is again. He maybe he made like a different brand. It's like, like oh, it's all branding. Yeah. It's all branding, isn't it? It's, yeah. So, um, but occasionally it turns up in Egyptian mythology stories alongside the other gods and goddesses. For example, he often hangs out well, with the um, with Tayet, the goddess of weaving. Fucking you know, interesting, mate. Um, he also occasionally turns up in the myth- myth- mythological stories. Featuring Semzu, the god of treatments for headaches and stomach aches. The fuck, mate. Yeah, no. That is. Oh, dear. So, pretty sure he should have um, made it on his own list, too. Uh, so, where, where Head Joke sensibly made bandages for him. So, he made clothing, he made bandages, he had some boring fucking friends who are apparently gods, but you know. Yeah. Bottom of the, bottom of the fucking temple. Oh, that is, that's, that's, yeah. But made classy trousers. Mm. Mm. I'll make clothes that are gone. Mm. Mm. It's like J Lo's stylist just <laughs> of, of the era. Oh dear. <laughs> Taylor for the stars. That's it. H- head the jute. Head tope. Yeah. I make clothes for the queen. Mm. Queen of pop. Um, it's. Do you, yeah. know, you got any more facts? I got one more. It's a big one. Um, I'll tell you what, my next one's a really small one. <laughs> hey, hey, and so it's the God Fact. But it's it's the way, I'm just going to read this one out because it's really quick. Oh, God, yeah, done. I'll, I'll finish this off and we can... And I've got, I've got one more afterwards. So I'll do this one. Okay, go on. <sighs> Kebchet, the goddess of freshness. <laughs> You're not so fresh. 
down there. You need Fembuschlet. What's the name? <laughs> sweat. K- Kibitschet. Anal sweat. What? Kibitschet. 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 Isn't that a story? Kibitschet. It's, I think it's, like a, it's, a, it's a lamb dish. Mm-hmm. Oh, Kibitschet. You think you dip it in like a sort of a, a kind of righty. Sort it's of, a fresh. It's a fresh. Very fresh, fresh. You dip it in like a yogurt mm. sort of mint yogurt cucumber sort of dip and you... It's got some 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 par- uh, I'm hungry now. Stop pars- it. Parsley in it. So, Fuck. so Caddyshack. Bit, uh, bit, bit, bit of lamb, bit of parsley, bit of chili maybe. Some 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 dried like um. Right, I'm gonna some dried uh, tomatoes in there. Some peppers. I'm gonna read this fact. Get online and start ordering. Capiscum. Mm, <laughs> yeah, bit, bit, bit hummus. So Kipshet was the daughter of Amnibus, the Egyptian Slash god for the death. Sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting, getting, a, getting a food on now. <laughs> Amnibus, the Egyptian god of death and mummification. Mm. So Kipshet was responsible for keeping the dead bodies nice and fresh during the, embal- um, the embalming process. But Kipshet uh, knew that she was doing what, what she was doing because she was also the goddess of embalming fluids. Andy, useful. Freshness. Yeah, no, it's, it's not like they're tied together. She's not like, you know, that and sandwiches. It's like, no, she's like embalming fluids and corpse cleanliness. Yeah, I can see the AB. It's good. It's good. She's obviously, when she picked jobs, she's like, yeah. I'll keep them close together. It makes it easier for me. It's less fucking around. I've got to keep running over to, like, I'm the god of bananas as well as, like... That would suck. Cleaning dead arseholes. Like, I can, <laughs> I, I can, I can do... The, the, these things are tied together. I haven't got to leave the room. You Why has this person died? I found a banana. Yeah, that's the one time. Like it's weird. My like, my two specialities are. It's weird how the gods have like loads of extra. Like they're like, what? How many jobs have you got? Like oh, like, three or four. I'm the god of like you know asparagus, hammers, and and small <laughs> small steps. You know, it's like just and small amount of peas. Small amount of peas, and uh, you know monocles. You wait until uh, you hear the title of my next one. That's my last one, and I'm done. Okay, I will get this one. This is a big one, so I'm going to take a big old... Apologies. Hang on a sec, one more sippies. Okay. The Rendlesham Forest Incident. I'm bringing it back home. Back to the UK, all right? Look. Yes. Great Britain! This occurrence is the most famous of alleged UFO events to have happened in the UK and is among the best known reported UFO events worldwide. Although I've never heard of it. No. I've um, not. It's been compared to the Roswell UFO incident. Uh, Has it? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, it's sometimes referred to as Britain's Roswell. Um, but I mean, it's far more legit than Roswell was. But anyway. The UK Ministry of Defence has stated that the event posed no threat to national security and therefore it was never investigated as a matter of security. Let's get to the event though. Okay. Go. Around 3 a.m. on 25th of December 1980, reported as 27th of December by a hall. Just after Christmas. Uh, uh, yeah. A security patrol near the east gate of RAF Woodbridge saw lights apparently descending into nearby Rendlesham Forest. These lights have been attributed. Sorry. Um, a security patrol near the east gate of RAF Woodbridge saw lights apparently descending into a nearby Rendlesham Forest. These lights have been attributed by astronomers to a piece of natural debris. Hmm. seen burning in the fireball or sorry, meteor over southern England at that time. Servicemen initially thought it was a downed aircraft. According to, um, this is the local guy, was, I can't remember his full name, but his surname is Holt. Serviceman Holt. According to Holt, uh, according to his memo that is the primary source for this, upon entering the forest to investigate, they witnessed a glowing object that was metallic in appearance with coloured lights. As they attempted to approach the object, it appeared to move through the trees and the animals on a nearby farm went into a frenzy. One of the servicemen, Sergeant Jim Penniston, later claimed to have encountered a craft of unknown origin while in the forest, although there was no publicised mention of this at the time and there is no corroboration by other witnesses. After daybreak on the morning of the 26th of December, a serviceman returned to a small clearing near the eastern edge of the forest and found three small impressions on the ground in a triangular pattern, as well as the burn marks and the broken branches on nearby trees. At 10.30, the local police were called out. It's time to see the impressions which they thought could have been made by an animal. Mm. Deputy Base Commander Lieutenant Colonel Charles Holt, the guy I mentioned earlier, uh, visited the site with se- uh, several servicemen in the early hours of 28th December 1980. They took radiation readings of the triangle depressions in the surrounding area as well, using ANDPR 27, a standard US military radiation survey meter. While they recorded a 0.07 mm 
milligrog to oh, I don't know the fucking radiation level point zero seven. In other regions, they detected point zero three. Um, around the background level. Furthermore, they detected a similar small burst over half a mile away from the landing site. Hall recorded the event on a micro cassette recorder. It was during the investigation that a flashing red light was seen across the field to the east, almost in line with the farmhouse, as the witnesses had seen on the first night. The Orford Nest Lighthouse is visible further to the east in the same line of sight. Later, according to Holt's memo, three star-like lights were seen in the sky, two to the north and one to the south, about 10 degrees above the horizon. Now, this is all like recorded really accurately by this guy because he's a military bot and there's a bunch of local vis- uh, vi- villagers <coughs> who also saw s- some and not all of it. Uh, Holt said that the brightest of these hovered for two or three hours. Two or three hours. And seemed to beam down a stream of light from time to time. The evidence for this are primarily Holt's audio tape and written report, but there were a number of locals who also witnessed some of the lights. But obviously, because he was actually there in the forest, they couldn't see all he, he could see, but... Uh, there were people, there were witnesses in the local towns. In 2010, Holt signed an affidavit confirming his experience and claiming that he believed the event was covered up by the government because uh, he seemed like basically the news reports at the time were just shut down. They In, in the UK, um, it's not actually a thing in the US, although uh, officially it's not, but it's expected that it probably is the case. Well, you um, know... But, but no, basically there's a, there's a law, um, there's a, uh, what's it called, the Official Secrets Act, yeah. If they enact that, the, the literally news news stories can be shut down. Like they can just say secret act. You can't say that, and they just cannot. They can kill a story. So the, the fact that the story disappeared so quickly, he's like, this looks like someone enacted the official secrets act, and like the, the you know the newspapers that have that enacted. If they even mention that that's happened, they can be put in jail for like incredible amounts of time. So no one ever talks shit about it. It's like it's a it's. And it's 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 enshrined in UK law, so things can be shut down in a way that they can't really officially in other countries. Although it's expected that, that it's a similar thing is done in other countries. Like probably they just threaten you. Like if you have some reporter and the government says you will not print this story or we'll you know IRS or so I don't know whatever the fuck right. Is this podcast safe then now that you've said this? Um, it what I mean like I'm. If if the government said it's officially secret act, you can't talk about this. I'd delete it. I'm not a fucking idiot um, <laughs> because I live in the UK and the UK is not. Um, it, it, I mean, it's it's transparent in that it's not. You're not entirely free to say what you want. You ha- there are restrictions on what you can and can't say, and it's understood that's the case. And I kind of like well, that's reasonable because sometimes. I'm so annoyed. It's really bad. Oh god damn. Stop being a bitch. All right, um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I I found that one interesting. And again, it's a bit more viable than some, but it is primarily this one dude. Um, there are some people who call bullshit on him. and um, But I think, I mean, he seems like, he's again, he's a military bod, he's a serviceman, and there were local people who saw some of the stuff he saw. Um, and there was, you know, they called it out, there was a police report, there was, there are various sources that there were broken branches and there were impressions of the ground, there were lights seen by lots of people. There was something going on. Don't know what. No. 1980. Damn. Damn, son. I interesting. I mean, it's not as um, as interesting as that other stuff without actual footage, but this mm. is like, um, you know, again, I think the military boys, you just, they're not going to fuck about, you know, the same way as some farmer's going to. No. Um, Back to Egypt Town. Egypt Town. So. Mistletoe and wine. Tough nut. Tough nut. Oh, no, that's exactly what I thought. Yeah. Sorry. That's said the obvious. I'll shut the fuck up now. Tefna Learn me. is the goddess of spit. <laughs> For fuck's sake. <laughs> oh, no, right? Oh, dear. So, she's often summarised um, as the goddess of water, but <laughs> goddess of water is a very generalised title, and we certainly don't want her to, to get confused with at Anculet, yeah, standard, um, who's also the goddess of water. Of course not, of course not. But more specifically, the water of the River Nile. So, let's get down to the specifics. Tefna is the goddess of moisture. Moist. Um, this includes moist air, dew, uh, light drizzle, and yes, even spit. In fact, Tefna's name can be translated as meaning to spit. And, um, oh dear. So, and she has been depicted as a picture of a mouth in mid-spit action. Nice. 
Very nice. So that's that's weird. Again, okay, that was not a check and trade. You don't want to hire someone to go. Hi, I need someone to spit. <laughs> done. I mean, you got it done. Yeah. But oh, fucking hell, you got, I, I didn't realise how useless a huge amount of the Egyptian gods are. So there's like the story is like Ankylet, there's for there's froth and there's I'm the god of the sun. I'm the scarab god. I roll the sun like a dung beetle to move where the sun's gonna be throughout the day. I'm awesome. And then you got I'm Dave. I'll fix the toilets. <laughs> and I'm Stephen. I'm gonna make you some nice clothes. I didn't realise those those little lesser known gods because I thought let's try to find something a bit more interesting than the, the normal ones. Mm. But um, hey, interesting. And I, I I couldn't remember I put the facts off. But do you know um in the films, uh, I can't remember Imhotep. Imhotep. Oh, in um, uh, Mummy. That's it. There's actually a god called Imhotep. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, he wasn't a god originally. Imhotep was a no. I'm pretty sure he was the... He was something first. I think he's no, like a king. No, he wasn't a king. I think he was an engineer and he made the first pyramids. I'm pretty sure... It's in, in one of the first two dynasties. He was mm. the guy that created... The, those, those big stepping stone pyramids. He was like the guy that invented them. Um, and I'm pretty sure he was killed horribly for being too smart or something. Mm. Because you can't, you know, you can't outsmart the, um, the pharaoh. I got uh, that. Interesting shit, though. Yes. I always love the Egypt- Egyptians. They're so fucking weird. Yeah. It's, it, they're so alien, like, and and when Stargate comes out, I remember Stargate came out. I was at ninety four on the first. I, was, I think I thought it was the cinema, but I remember just being like, "You watch that film, and you're like, yeah, that makes sense. Like, it's like they were aliens and they found the Stargate and they came over here and like, so all the local people were just like, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, we'll sure, sure, we'll build, a, yeah, we'll build a pyramid, sure. Hmm. And you're like, yeah, that makes sense. They just, yeah, it's like. Because it, it makes as much sense as all the weird shit that they were doing anyway. Yeah. And they did it so well. And obviously, you see it now. It's such a... Because you see it now and you see, well, this is a big fucking barren like wasteland that is a, this, the desert. And you have all this, like, huge shit you've built. And you forget that it wasn't that way when yeah. they were building it. Like, there was, you know, there was a... There was a water table. They had, you know, monsoons sometimes. They had, like, huge grasslands and stuff. It wasn't all desert. Because it, we're talking in such enormous timescales, but it's still, um, even then, they still did amazing shit at a time when we didn't think, you know, like in other parts of the country, in other parts of the world, they were just, you know, fuckers, you know, just hunter gatherers, just basically just like murdering fuckers and I don't know. I mean, like I, I always find it interesting. You think back in time, they were they were they were around. They were Egyptians. They were pyramids. And there's all these creatures that have got like all the megafauna that went extinct, you know, um, oh fucking like really mammoths and stuff. Yeah. They were still knocking around when the Egyptians were building pyramids. <laughs> Man, it's... That's what fucks me up. And they were like those giant sloths in Australia that were like ten foot long. And and there's all these other huge animals that are like saber toothed tigers and all this shit. They were still banging around at a time when they were, st- you know, like that's just that's so weird. Like you're in Europe, we get eaten by cave bears. <laughs> and they're building pyramids in each, and I was like, that's just crazy. They work together with the mammoths. Yeah. To it's, take the, the I mean definitely they use mammoths to drag the stones around. Come Absolutely. on. Can't just make sense. And they get the saber toothed tigers to chase them to uh yeah. make them go, Oh, I better quicken up and, and and then when they finally do, you know, get crawl up from exhaustion, we eat mammoths for like a mm. fucking year. Um it's just, yeah, it's a no brainer. Best delicious. I think mammoths. Mm. No, oh, that forward. I feel bad. That they're kind of I, elephants are so benevolent and nice. Oh, don't don't get me wrong. I would feel bad. I'd I'd cry when I'm like, oh, you're so delicious. <laughs> I don't think they are delicious. I don't reckon they are. I want a lazy one though, so it's not too tough. That's me. You're like a veal veal version of an elephant. I feel like an arsehole now. Yeah, you can't sound like an arsehole. Yeah. Okay, I don't want to eat an elephant. On that bombshell. <laughs> <laughs> we find we're James, going to go get some mammoth for tea. We won't eat. Oh, mammoth steaks! Fuck. Best. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now he's the bastard. Yeah. Oh, oh you want to eat your ring, do you? Dude, no. I'm just thinking of Flintstones. Come on. <laughs> Yabba dabba do. Right. When I get that massive rack of ribs and tuck it on the side of the car, when it, so... that was elephant ribs. Let's not fuck around. That was definitely elephant ribs, wasn't it? Mm, yeah. All yeah. right. Look. Yeah. We're gonna go and find some elephant ribs yep. on black market cool. and. Um, might have to go to Africa and hunt some shit using podcast money. But we're probably going to do that. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. Well, I'll see all you fuckers. Well, I I'll, I'll, won't see or even hear you, but I will see you with your ears. speak to you, uh, both of you, <laughs> next week. Hi. Episode 17 next hi, week. Hi, mum. <laughs> oh, my mum, she gave it one little listen. And she's like, okay, okay. And I was, she told me she did it. I was like, sorry, mum. Do you mean little swear bears? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I was a bit naughty. I shouldn't. Um, the thing is, I'm yeah. talking to my mate, so I don't sense myself in a way that I would if I was talking yeah. to... If I was talk, say, I mean, like some episodes we've got, like you know, <coughs> loads of people yeah. listening on some of the episodes. Mm-hmm. And you think if I was talking to like a crowd that big, I would not talk this way. So it's kind yeah. of it's interesting. But um, uh, anyway, next 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 podcast we're going to be in seat of the beard. We we're going to dress up nice and we're going to act the part. Top hats, top hats, monocles, mm. pipes. Yeah, um, uh, 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 bow ties. I don't yeah. know. Spinning ones. Not no no. Spinning the whole time. Yeah. So episode seventeen sponsored by Suited and Booted. Suitedandbooted.com. Mm. Splash the gash over over the bash dash I can't on the off off the fly, that's terrible. No. Bye bye my suits. Bye. Bye bye. Bye, love you. Love you, love you. You know how it goes. You're on an alien planet trying your best to hide amongst all the charmingly basic primates. <laughs> While you go about your totally innocent mission for the Zeppelin Imperium. Hail, Hail Zeppelin! And your disguise is just not doing the job. Your gland jars are being squeezed. Your crabbocks are getting damp. You can't even feel your plimps. My plimps! That's why we here at Quellum are uniquely poised as the premier human integration system. We've been hiding in plain sight amongst humans for decades without suspecting a thing. <laughs> You'll be comfortable, safe, and utterly undetectable to these hairy simpletons. <laughs> not to mention your crabbocks will have all the blunt space they need. Some of our high-profile customers have been Grabbed Shanks, Rudigero Flemsh, Lizzo, and even <coughs> AKA George Clooney. You've tried the others, now climb on into the best. Quill'em! We flegg'em the quepple.